Hey guys, my name is Kelly Garrett. I am the managing partner of Rehab Wallet, the lending arm of PassiveInvesting.com. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about how to make money as a private lender using a debt fund. A little bit about me real quick. I, again, I, I am the managing partner of Rehab Wallet. Obviously, um, Passive Investing has different legs and arms of their business. And um, one is a lending arm, and we're going to go into that a little bit in a minute, but um, the branding name of that lending arm is called Rehab Wallet. I live here in Charleston, South Carolina. I have over two, de two decades in the lending business. And at that same time, I've had a, 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 some type of lending business, whether it was a brokerage or private lending and now a hard money lending company. I also was flipping properties for over 18 years. And so when Dan Hanford and Danny Randazzo and I got together to open up Rehab Wallet, in June of 2020, we kind of opened that, we opened up Rehab Wallet through the, through the lens of a flipper, which was myself. I had used different lending companies, private lending, hard money lending um, throughout my time as a flipper. And we changed some of the things we didn't like and we kept some of the things that we liked a lot. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about Rehab Wallet and our team and our partners and so forth, um, just go to rehabwallet.com for some more details. At passiveinvesting.com, obviously you guys know Dan Hanford, Danny Randizzo, um, and you obviously know that um, they, amongst a lot of people here in this group in the Multifamily Investor Nation, do multifamily, right? So, we, so passiveinvesting.com has a multifamily leg or arm of your business, of their business. They also have a storage arm, car wash arm, and a hotel arm, as well as a lending arm. And, and, and today we're going to talk a little bit about that lending arm of PassiveInvesting.com and how we use a debt fund here um, to, to actually uh, raise money in the debt fund and lend it out um, through the debt instrument of a uh, hard money lender. So, you know, I speak a lot and I, I, I talk a lot about um, lending and how to start um, a lending company. Well, I've kind of come up with these five pillars because if you know how to do these five things, you can have a lending arm of your business as well. So the first thing obviously is raising capital. We either got to have the capital or you got to raise the capital. At Rehab Wallet, when we first got started in June of 2020, we were using our own personal funds because we wanted to get a proof of concept before we actually started um, raising capital inside of a fund. So you could use your own capital or you can start out of the gate raising capital. The next thing you have to do is you got to go originate a loan. So you have capital over here, and you have to go um, kind of connect with a borrower. We actually, um, our niche is single family residences, 200,000. Our loan amount is, is 200K and below. And we just do a lot of them. So um, we go and originate, find, find areas, events, investor groups, where our borrowers are. We network there and originate loans to take um, the capital that we're raising. And, and again, lending is just arbitraging capital. You might, you might have been to your bank before and talked to a loan officer or a loan originator. That's where that name comes from. So you're originating the loan. The next step is that you got to process the loan. So, so it, that's just all the, 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 the documents that everybody hates to send in, right? Um, you know, the, the, the insurance document, the articles of organization, the scope of work from your contractor, all these things are inside of our processing department. And that's a very detailed um, pillar that, that you need a very detailed person collecting that, those, um, those documents. Number four is servicing. Once the loan is closed out, somebody's got to make, the, make sure the payments are being made. Sometimes they're made. Sometimes they're made on time. Sometimes they're not made on time. So the servicing piece of it is very important. And last but not least, the compliance piece is very important because 
sometimes those air insurances, um, they get canceled. And so somebody's got to be on top of that. You got to make sure that every property that you, um, that you have actually, um, the collateral that you've lent on is, uh, the taxes are paid. You might also, um, just things happen, right? And so that compliance piece of it's always just staying on top of the loan to make sure it kind of, um, goes from, from, from the origination all the way through the payoff and doing that timely and, um, and making sure the payments are made on time as well. So to me, those are the five pillars of lending. If you can do those five things, you can have a lending arm of your business as well. So what is a debt fund? So we use a debt fund to, well, back up. We use lending as the debt instrument inside of the debt fund. A debt fund can be used for multiple things. We actually happen to use it to lend out of. Right. Some people use a debt fund to um, raise capital and buy stocks. Some people raise capital and buy businesses. And just arbitraging that capital is what some people do with a debt fund. And we actually are talking today about lending inside of this debt fund. So we're just going to go through some some specifics of how we use the debt fund at PassiveInvesting.com in rehab wallet, how we use a debt fund, how we've, how we've had success using it. So inside of the debt fund, obviously you go out and raise capital and we pay our investors 6% up to $100,000 and 8% above $100,000. We, we, we also um, only accept accredited investors and there's um, specific things to, about a, about a, a investor if you're going to actually use a 506C fund um, as your debt fund and that, you know, we can get real deep with that. Obviously, there's a lot of SEC requirements with this, but the definition of an accredited is, is anyone that grosses 200000 or more um, if you're single and, and as a couple jointly that you make over 300000 or, not and, but or, you have a million dollars in net worth, not including including your home. So that in the, you know, SEC eyes is accredited. So we raise money in the fund. We pay our investors 6% up to 8%. We also pay um, our distributions monthly. This is, a, this is a, a, a critical key role, I think, in our success because a lot of people that are putting their money inside this debt fund isn't the same. What well, could be, it could be the same investor that's also investing in your multifamily, but it, it's just, it's, it's just a different um, uh, piece of their money. For instance, if you have a pie chart, right. And you're in your financial literacy here and you want to take 5% of your money or a certain percent of your money and keep it conservative and ensure that distributions are made and ensure that you can put your hands on the money, right? Because if we're, if, if you have an investor that's also investing in your multifamily, they can't touch that money, right? We're not always sure. Sometimes we have to pause distributions inside those um, multifamily uh, funds. So this, this debt fund could be the same investor or a different investor. You know, our, our, um, our, um, investors that are inside of our debt fund are typically ones that that need and want to live on they, they need this this distribution to live on and they um it, it's, it's a it's a conservative place to put to, to put their money um i talked about the liquidity option they we give them um as long as we have 90 days for a liquidity option they can get their money in and out of the fund if if they need to um we also uh, give a uh, compounding feature as well. So in an example here, if you have a $100,000 um, uh, investor and they just decide, you know what, I really don't need the money on a monthly basis. I'd rather just stay in and compound. Give an example here, 100000 at 8% is about $667. So month two, 
their 100,667 can compound at 8%. So in theory, they'll, they'll make way more money than 8%. It's about a 10% um, total amount if they keep it in and let it compound over a 10 year period. So there's different types of, um, I guess we just call it, you know, um, um, uh, carrots on tops, if you will, different things inside of a debt fund that we made, that, that we made the debt fund um, just better, a little bit more attractive. And so we like to pay our, we like to pay our uh, distributions monthly, not quarterly. We like to have compounding features and we also um, allow for a 90 day liquidity option. A lot of people ask if our general partners, which Dan, Danny, and myself are the general partners of the fund, are we inside of it investing as well? And, and absolutely, yes. We have multiple seven figures of our own personal money inside of our debt fund. And um, we love being investors alongside um, everyone else. So how do you make money um, inside of, uh, not inside of a debt fund, but using a debt fund to lend out of? So where the lenders make their money is on the, the rates, the rate and the fees. So let me go into that a little bit real quick. Obviously with hard money lending or private lending, the rates are much higher than a traditional bank, right? We can close in 48 hours after clear title. So a bank can't do that. We're going to be another option besides, besides a bank. Um, so, so the rates are going to be a little bit, a little bit more expensive. So if, if we're lending at 14%, that's how the lender will, will, will make their money. The fees, we charge two points, which is two points or two origination points, however you want to, um, whatever you want to call it. And we also charge a lender fee. And so the, what the lender fee consists of is, is just administrative fees inside of the, in, in, inside of the deal. For instance, um, every deal, pretty much every deal um, has a rehab. So they, they, they use rehab wallet to purchase the loan and also to rehab it, right? So the rehab, we hold the rehab uh, money back and deliver it in draws. So the draws have to be inspected uh, with pictures, videos, um, sometimes personal inspections. And so that lender fee goes to pay for that ad, those, those admin um, hours uh, during the term of the loan. The length of the loan, we, we, we like six to nine months, maybe a year, but typically you're in and out of our loan. And so the, um, at, at times you can make 14% plus two points, plus a lender fee. And if you're able to turn that money twice in a year, you can make two more points and another lender fee. So that's how the lender makes the money. Now let's go into an example real quick. So I talked a little bit about the 14% um, the interest rate, the 2% origination fee, and a 1% lender fee. So that equals 17%. Now, if you're paying, if you're paying here, your investors eight percent. You got to subtract that out. Let's say your expenses, whether it's your payroll or software, office, whatever your expenses are, equate to three percent. You could do a have a total net profit of six points. So if you have a two million dollar fund at six percent. You know, as a lender, you could set to make approximately $120,000 that year. If you have a $10 million fund and you're netting six points or 6%, you could net upwards of $600,000. So that's how the lender arbitrages the capital of the investors to make money. So that's just a little bit about um, how to make money using a debt fund um, as a lender. Like I said, there's a lot of people that use a debt fund 
for building and excuse me, buying businesses. There's people that use a debt fund to um, arbitrage that capital and buy crypto or buy stocks. So that's how we have at Rehab Wallet and Passive Investing has chosen to use our debt fund. And we've just chose to use some experience that I've had um, for the last few decades now and use lending as our uh, debt instrument. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, open it up for a few questions and see if anybody's got any questions or any um, anything that they want to um, you'd you'd like me to 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 answer. I got a a question about insurance. Um, so. As an insurance, as a lender, when your borrower is getting insurance on the property, um, you want to make sure you are the mortgagee. So any given, during, during the time that you actually have the loan, some things could happen, right? Maybe they're canceling their insurance. Maybe the, for whatever reason on a coastal property, the insurance company decides they're going to cancel the insurance. Well, if you have a, um, if your note, if you have done the proper um, documentation and have become the mortgagee on the on the documents or within their um, insurance company, they'll notify you of any cancellation, of any change, of any problem. Um, and, and that's what you want to make sure you, you, because we want to be notified if there's any problems. But you have to get with the insurance company prior and add yourself as a mortgagee. Does the operational payroll and expenses come out of the total funds income or just the GP side? Um, Tiger, that was a good question. That completely comes out of the GP side. The fund, the fund, the investors make 8% over 100,000. The investors make 8% regardless of how the fund does. The investors make 8% regardless if we have defaults. Um, the, the fund makes, the investors make 8% regardless if somebody cancels their insurance and we have to actually uh, force place insurance on the property. It doesn't matter. So the fund is operational and is paid. The investors are paid regardless. The, the expenses and all that's coming out of the GP side. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, Mark's got a question with regard to rehab draws. Do the, do the borrowers pay interest on the entire loan amount or just the portion that is advanced? We have them pay on the entire loan amount. And this is why, because let's give an example of a hundred thousand dollar loan um, purchase price and a thirty thousand dollar rehab. And I hold back those thirty thousand, that thirty thousand dollar rehab. I have to hold it back, and be prepared, and hold that money for that borrower that we've already closed, right? So we go ahead and collect interest on the entire loan amount, the entire 100,000 plus the 30,000, even if they haven't submitted a draw yet. We're holding the money, it's there. I can't lend that out to anybody else. It's there for them to have because it's theirs. Um, at, Dan's asking about a um, SEC attorney. So what's the best way to start start a fund like this with SEC attorney? Absolutely. Um, you know, that you can Google those guys and, and find you a good SEC attorney that starts and opens up a fund and you have to make a decision whether you're going to be a 506B or a 506C fund. Do you have to pro provide a PPM to your investors similar to syndication? Absolutely. And that PPM will, will you know, we, we're specific inside of our PPM that we will only do first lien positions. And you don't have to do it that, that specific, right? If you want to keep it open to first and second mortgages, 
then keep it open in there. Um, if you if you're wanting to do just single family, no commercial inside inside your fund, then be specific. If you want to leave it open for you to be able to do whatever comes across your path, then leave it open. But um, but yes, um, every investor signs a PPM, and and also inside that PPM. You also, it's also covering you um, as the general partners because it also says in there that they can't be a, let's just use this term, run on the bank. Remember how we said that we have a 90 day liquidity option? But what happens? Our PPM states and explains that not everybody can come in at the same time and all get their money back at any given time, right? So it is. It is um, based on the decisions of the general partners on how, um, whose money goes out first and so forth. What was your approximate cost to set up your debt fund? Legal and compliance. It's based on your attorney, to be honest with you. Um, I, can't, I can't give you an example because I've seen it range from... 2,500 to 25,000. It is all based on your SEC attorney and, and what they charge. So remember, um, inside of your debt fund or what we did prior to setting up our debt fund, we got our proof of concept going, right? Before you go spend a ton of money, we, you know, used our own money. We knew that the phone was ringing. For borrowers, we we had our setup, we had our um, you know each department set up. We knew what we were doing. Then we went and um, got with our attorneys, set up our debt fund, paid the money, and got it started. Do you guys raise money yourselves, or do you guys utilize and pay a third party fundraiser for your debt fund? We do both. It's not third party. We call them co GPs. So we bring in a co-GP that maybe will raise money, but it's about, but but 90% of our fund, we, we've, um, we've raised ourselves. Um, to date, we've raised um, since June of 2020, 130 million. And, um, and that's 100,000 at a time. Our minimum investment actually is 25,000. So it could be 25,000 at a time. We just... Um, but what we call them co-GPs that we um, that we allow to or or ask to to raise raise money for us, but no third party. And we do not um, use any institutional money because you'll see some funds that actually leverage their fund um, to actually have more money to go to go arbitrage. We do not do that. Don't expect to do that. All right, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it. Okay, I'm gonna. So I was just saying, if I had one more question, sorry. Um, I think, I think this kind of summarizes today um, our webinar. Appreciate everybody's attention and all the great questions. If you have any questions, um, you can always um, contact me if you need to at Kelly K E L L I at rehabwallet.com. Um, look forward to seeing everybody next on the next Multifamily Investor Nation webinar. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you.